Hi, my name is Andrew Gomez. Welcome to Spotlight on Fine Arts. This is the Chelmsford School's Art Department TV show. Today, we will be learning about what it is like to be a high school art student. We will also celebrate our art students who have won awards. And now, on to Spotlight on Fine Arts, episode 70. My name is Ethan Beal. Every year, our art students enter special art competitions and exhibits. We also win all types of awards. Let's head back to the studio and learn with the student who won this year's Peace Poster Award. Bravo, student artists. Hi, I'm Christy Whittlesey, the Fine and Performing Arts Coordinator in the Chelmsford Public Schools, and I'm very excited to bring you Visual Art Madness this month because we have just experienced Youth Art Month in the state of Massachusetts. And so many exciting things have been happening in our visual art department um, with competitions, festivals, and special opportunities for our art students in grades K through 12. And with me here in the studio is Ella McGuire, who is a Parker grade six student. And you're here to talk about your experience in art class and something exciting that just happened with one of your pieces. So thank you for being here. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Now you've been in visual art classes at Parker for two years. Yeah. Now is about the time that our grade four students are starting to make selections as far as what they're going to take for arts block in middle school. So if you were to describe art class and what those grade four students will be learning in grades five and six, what would you tell them? Well, I would tell them that it's really fun. We do all sorts of projects. We do painting, we do clay, we do drawings. And right now I'm actually working on a clay project. Tell me about that. It's called a spirit shaker. And inside there's like beads. And when you shake it, it like makes a special sound. And you can do like an animal a person for it and I'm doing a dog for mine. Cool. I love dogs. And what do you put inside to make the sound? Um, it's actually dried up clay that we put oh, inside. Oh, that's clever. Well, after you create it, you can come to my chorus class and play some percussion on your clay piece and uh, we'll sing along with it. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about the Peace Poster Contest. So this is a contest that's open to artists throughout the town and uh, tell me a little bit about about that. Well the theme, the theme for it was Future of Peace so I did like a ton of different stuff that matches the theme and I put it in my poster. And actually maybe we should take a little peek at the poster so you can describe it and the people at home can see what you created. So here it is. So tell me about this piece. Well I put in the doves because they represent peace mm -hmm. and I put the spaceships because those are kind of futuristic and right that goes along with the theme the the future of peace yeah okay and all I put all those different flags from all around the world together so it would like symbol peace mm -hmm. through the whole yeah world. lots of little uh, pieces of symbolism in that and how what media did you use? Uh, did, is it a marker drawing? Is it paint? Uh, I used colored pencil for it. Oh, it's all colored pencil? Yeah. Wow, that's very detailed. And so what happened? You submitted this piece with the help of Ms. Adler, who is the grade five through eight art teacher at Parker. And um, what happened? Well, for the, to find out who won, we went to the library, the public library, 
and the senior centers voted like who would win and my whole art class went and then they chose a number and your piece was labeled the number mm -hmm. and then my number was picked and there was a first, second, and third place. And your piece got? First. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so they probably put the numbers on to make it anonymous, right? So nobody knew who did each piece and then they did the voting. Yeah. So the pieces were judged on their own merit, you know, and uh, that's quite an accomplishment. Um, to be, you know, get the first place. Obviously, people thought that not only was it beautiful, but had a lot of thought behind it. Thank you. So, yeah, congratulations. What are you looking forward to for the rest of this year in, in art class? Well, I'm looking forward to, I like to draw, and I like painting, too. I also like the clay. Mm -hmm. I basically like all, a lot of stuff in art, all of it. That's great. Do you have advice for younger students who want to be as successful an artist? Uh, yeah, I would just tell them just have fun and be creative. Perfect. All right, well, congratulations again. Thank you. I know I'll be seeing a lot more work from you. And now let's take a moment and meet some of the students who won awards in the Boston Globe Scholastic Art Competition, who had their work displayed in the Massachusetts Art Educators Association exhibit in Boston, and who have uh, experienced success in visual art in other areas so far this year. Hi, my name is Anna Kehoe. I'm a sophomore, and my piece, C'est Moi, received an honorable mention in the Boston Globe Scholastic Arts Competition. Hi, my name is Ella McGuire. I go to Parker Middle School and I'm in grade six and I just won the piece and I just won a contest for my piece poster. Hi, my name is Julia Pitts and I'm an eighth grader at McCarthy Middle School and my piece Sinophobia is displayed at the Mass Art Show in Boston and I had a piece in the Chumsford Public Library and uh, at a competition at Neshoba Tech. My name is Vienna Lee and I'm in 8th grade at McCarthy Middle School. I have a piece entered in Boston and at the Chelmsford Library. Hi, my name is Jenny and I'm in 8th grade. I won a gold key and honorable mention in the Boston Globe and my art was featured in Boston and Chelmsford Library and I submitted some artwork in the Shoba Art Competition. My name is Sofia Rodriguez. I'm in 8th grade and I go to McCarthy Middle School. My piece was displayed in the Boston Globe and um, the library in town. My name is Leah Bosch. I'm a seventh grader at McCarthy Middle School. My piece was entered in the Boston Global Arts Competition and I got an honorable mention. My piece was also displayed in the public library at Chelmsford. My name is Josie Lee. I go to McCarthy Middle School. I'm in eighth grade. I won the gold key in Boston and the silver medal in nationals. I have my artwork displayed in the Chelmsford Library and I have some art submitted into the Neshoba Art Competition. Hi, I'm Sophia. Uh, I'm a fourth grader at Byam and my artwork was chosen at the Boston Art Show. Hi, my name is Kiriaki. I'm in grade one. My school is Byam. My artwork is displayed in Boston. My name is Maddie, and I go to Byam School, and I'm in first grade, and my artwork was displayed in Boston. My name is Jade, and I'm in fourth grade at South Rose School, and my artwork was on display in Boston. Hi, my name is Kira, and um, and I go in Sabda School, and my artwork got displayed in Boston. Hi, my name is Jaden. I'm in second grade. I go to South Hill School, and my artwork is displayed in Boston. Hello, my name is Grace. Some days I wonder, what will our classes be like in high school? Do you think about that too? Well, Cynthia and Autumn are two high school art students with some answers. Let's hear all about their experiences in the high school art.
Hello, I'm Cynthia Liu, and I'm a junior in Charlottesville High School currently. I'm, I've taken um, art classes for all three years of high school so far. I've taken Studio Art 1, Studio Art 2, and Studio Art 3 currently. And um, I've just learned a lot through these two classes. Okay, and uh, hi, I'm Anna Valen, and I'm also a junior at Charlottesville High School right now. And I've taken art for all three years of high school. And I started with Studio 1 and 2, which was a half-year class. And then so far I've done two full-year classes, Studio 3 and then Honors. For Studio 1 and 2, you learn a lot about the basics. And Studio 1 is more focused on drawing. And then Studio 3, you do a lot more sculpture. So you learn kind of a different variety of stuff you've never tried. And you can really experiment with the different materials available. And then Studio 3 is when you start to really find your own style and find your own practice in art and really enjoy using different projects and different materials and then honors art is when you start working on your portfolio so now I'm developing my portfolio mainly in breath which is like the, showing off all the different things you can do that you've learned throughout the other classes um, so I found that Studio 1 and 2, like Autumn said, is a really good foundation for just Studio 3 and Honors where you can kind of experiment with other materials, different art styles, techniques, everything in that domain. So Studio 1, again, like Autumn said, it's based on drawing, it's more basics where you learn how to do basic shapes, just shading, and Studio 2 focus on a lot of like more 3D and like materialistic kind of art. So I feel like these two offered a great foundation, just go in and kind of expand on your own art style for Studio 3 and Honors. Now Cynthia, you were saying something yesterday about prompts and how yes. they have kind of, that kind of structure has made you grow as an artist. Yes. Would you talk about that a little? Okay, so I realized in Studio 3 a lot of prompts were given. For example, there was surrealism, surrealism and abstract currently that we're doing and I feel like these prompts just helped you kind of expand on your own art style because they gave you a guideline to kind of go off of. And with this guideline, you can really take it anywhere, especially with broader topics like surrealism and abstract. Um, I feel like these two um, prompts just allowed you to um, experiment with a lot of different subjects and just techniques and just forms to um, just show off your skill and kind of allow you to learn about art more because these are so broad and they require a lot of creativity. So, so this piece I did for the Aresia Science Fiction Art Contest and I originally made it with the idea of contrast and how different time periods and different genres of literature contrast each other. So I thought of the idea of using the different contrasting colors, blue and orange, and then I built that off of the different contrasting time periods of like the dragon in more medieval times and then the buildings in more science fiction futuristic times. And to do it I used watercolor, markers, pens, a mixed media of things on mixed media paper, and then I just finished it off with some like outlining. Then the next three is my piece first is a girl and she's in a dress and I thought it would and she's a skeleton like her bones are in the skeleton form and I thought it would really represent like inner beauty and how inner beauty reflects onto the outside because the dress shows on the outside and then the skeleton reflects on the inside and I wanted to do it on black paper because it kind of shows that like inside outside kind of are and then I also use that because it's something I never did before and I really wanted to experiment with it so that's some of pastels and colored pencil and then the next one was my self-portrait which I just did with pencil and I took the picture myself so it was just something that I wanted to experiment with really doing something very particular to a picture and since I took it myself it also gave me some background in photography which was nice and then the last one is a piece with a bunch of figures in it and I did that with charcoal and I, st and I originally started with the idea of taping down different like cut out triangles so that I could because I just thought it would be fun to like be able to peel them off and see what was left after so I thought about about building your life and like now as high school stu students we're going into the college process and we need to start building the pieces of our life so I did that and the figures are kind of building a path of their life that they'll lead. And then all of that was for the Art All State, comp uh, the Art All State competition, and it was for um, 
at, at UMass Dartmouth. So this is a piece that represents um, my style as a whole. I very much prefer using black and white, and I love charcoal. It's one of my favorite mediums to work in. And this piece also represents kind of me as a person because it's of a horse, and I've always loved horses. I'm very much an animal person, and I've even had my own horse for about um, six years. So it really represents me, I feel like. And the reason I did this piece was because because my horse recently passed away this past summer and I kind of wanted to memorialize her in this piece. And this piece taught me that art can be used as a form of expression and memory almost. Because of my horse's memory, I like ended up doing this piece and it means a lot to me because it first, it's of my horse obviously, but secondly, it's because it showed me that art is so much more expressive and more meaningful than I ever thought it could be. Okay. Secondly, um, my second piece is a self-portrait that I did. And this self-portrait is the very first human I've basically ever drawn in my life, besides some doodles of cartoon characters here and there. This is the first realistic piece I did, and it's done by charcoal and pencil. And this piece means a lot to me because it made me really go outside my comfort zone. This piece was done for Art Allstate, and um, this was a piece that was required. So without the requirement of this piece, I wouldn't have done this portrait, but I'm very glad it was because I learned a lot about just drawing the human like figure itself, just everything from the structure of the face to even like texture of hair. And this taught me more than just techniques because it learned, it showed me that going outside your comfort zone isn't necessarily a bad thing. Usually people are like, yes, go outside your comfort zone, but I've never really believed in that until now. And this piece just really showed me how fun it is to maybe try something new. And it made me want to draw humans even more because I want to improve myself from this piece. And lastly, I have um, the very the very first colored piece I've done. It's done in charcoal and um, not charcoal. I'm sorry, pastels. And it's of a vase and flowers. This was a still life I had. Um, a friend of our family's gave us this vase for me to draw with these gorgeous flowers, so I did it. And this is the very first piece that I've done in full color. Um, and this really showed me how nice and expressive art can be. It showed me that art does truly come in so many different forms and it showed me how um, art doesn't have to be very stiff and um, it doesn't have to be so straightforward and stiff because usually like the horse example that you probably saw a little bit earlier um, I like to make every single detail perfect and this art piece showed me that it does art doesn't have to be perfect in order to be well done um, so the still life, I actually changed it up a little bit, like the leaves you see in the picture are not completely um, the leaves that was in the still life, the, the actual flowers in real life. And it showed me to kind of relax and just use art as a form of expression instead of focusing on every single detail, every leaf and petal the flower had to offer. And it was really fun to do because this was completely something new and it turned out great. So it showed me that experimenting with just different colors and like techniques and just using other forms of subjects really just helped me expand on my own skill that was already there. And I plan on majoring um, in STEM, something in, in the STEM field later on, but I do continue, I do plan on continuing with art by minoring it, in it with whatever college I end up going to. So my main reason for minoring art is because I found another passion in just the STEM field with math and sciences, and I think that STEM actually does connect with art just because, um, for example, the major engineering that I'm considering in to go into, engineer, engineering create, um, offers a lot of experiences and opportunities to use your creativity much like art does and I feel like just engineering cr requires a lot of that outside the box thinking that kind of technique and skill building that art also has taught me to do and has allowed me to expand on and I'm definitely minoring in art because I want to learn more I want to experiment with even more um, just uh, techniques and just also material and mediums that I haven't really gotten to really use or expand my skill on yet so I hope to just incorporate art into my life by majoring something in uh, more technical and more I guess uh, mathematical situations. Okay so for me in the future and starting with next year, next year I'll be taking AP art and that's when I'm gonna build my portfolio towards my concentration which is more so what I like one specific focus throughout my the next 12 pieces of my portfolio and we've done breadth this year so that will help me prepare for college since I want to go to an art school so I plan on majoring in fashion design because I really want to 
and continue on with being creative and, and, and enhancing art with my life and I think it'll be a really nice step in the right direction using art in my portfolio that I'm going to do an AP towards fashion design and I really want to do fashion design because it's an opportunity to create something and allow people to feel as beautiful as they can in the clothes that they love and it's just something I've always been passionate about in my life so I plan on majoring in fashion design and then still doing some art pieces like you saw before. Now for the official Spelling Bee Rules. My name is James Thomas and I'm a senior and I'm one of the musical directors of the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. And hi, uh, my name is Emma DeWitt, I am a sophomore and I play Olive in Spelling Bee. Okay, um, 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee is a hysterical show, it's musical comedy. It features a small cast of uh, 15, 15 or 16 um, and it takes place at a spelling bee and it features a bunch of kids uh, who just really want to win and it's, it's, a really, it's a really sweet show and it's a really fun show for, for everybody. The show is May 3rd and 4th at 7 p.m. May 5th at 3 p.m., May 10th and 11th at 7 p.m., and then May 12th at 12 noon.
we are holding it instead of in the Performing Arts Center, it is going to be in the black box, so it's going to be a very close-knit experience for the audience and the cast. But um, just a quick note, uh, please be aware that there is a little bit of questionable content in the show, but it's fun for the family, but we recommend um, ages like middle school and up if you're thinking about bringing the kids. Um, you can purchase tickets uh, from a cast member, they are $10, or you can purchase them if you go to CHS, you can purchase them at any of the lunches, and or you could uh, call the number 978-251-5111 and purchase a ticket, and you really should because it's a fun show. Go ahead, go and sing, don't talk, cause beat won't stop, no way, 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 way. Sing, 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 sing